Okay, so this is a journey into music and sound with math, engineering, and MATLAB. And this is part two of the series. Uh, what we did in part one of the series was we modeled the movement of a speaker using a sine wave. We connected that sine wave and the movement of the speaker to the sound level of this uh, being generated by the speaker. And then we took a look at the sine wave and looked at its uh, characteristics, for instance, the frequency, the amplitude, and the period. And we talked a little bit, for instance, about the uh, what is considered to be CD quality. So now in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at music using MATLAB. All right. So first of all, let's start off here by looking at the MATLAB environment. And by the way, this is a uh, older version of MATLAB. You may have access to a newer version. And if, by the way, you're a student, you can get uh, MATLAB for a relatively cheap price. Okay. So any which way, uh, looking at the uh, development environment here, uh, what we have is we have the current directory information, what's in the current directory where I'm at. And this is my directory where I store much of my music type files. You have the command uh, history. These are just the different commands that may have been typed in, for instance, in the command window over here to make MATLAB do different things. And of course, this is the uh, command window. Okay. Now what I'm going to open is the MATLAB uh, editor area, and this is where you'd write your programs uh, for you know different types of uh, programs that you may be uh, writing or trying to do in order to manipulate whether it's music, signals, or do some of this type of math function within MATLAB. And so what you'll notice is that many of the areas here, if you're not familiar with uh, how MATLAB uh, the editor uh, works, uh, you'll notice that many of the areas here are in green. What the green areas are, these are just comments. These are comments so that, for instance, the person who is working with MATLAB can understand better what's going on in the actual code. Okay. However, the actual MATLAB compiler um, does not uh, actually read through this. The program itself does not read through the green stuff. It understands that that is uh, related to you. Now the other stuff here that's in black and in uh, what seems to be a lighter purple, if you will, those are actually the program parts that the uh, MATLAB will actually read through. Okay, so now at the top here, starting at line number 10, what you'll notice is that I have a set of uh, variables Okay, or constants, uh, whichever way you want to look at it, um, where I've set specific values. So this one here, the nth, what I'm saying is nth is equal to 6,000, and I have mth is equal to 80. Okay, and then I have this variable here, which I've named name of music file, and I put a string into it. And what a string is, what a string is, is just a collection of uh, letters that have some sort of a meaning. In this case, the meaning in this case is the name of the uh, file that I'm going to open and look at within MATLAB. All right. And then uh, down here, what we uh, what this line does is it takes the file and it opens it using this function here called wave read. And it brings out the file information into a vector, which we'll call Y. And it gives the frequency, uh, the sampling frequency information, and it tells how many bits that information has been encoded as. Okay. Uh, then on line number 18 here, what this does is this looks at, this uh, prints out the sampling frequency to the screen, to the command window. It prints out the number of bits. And then I just do a subtraction here where this now, when I subtract n minus mth, it allows me now to show or to put into this vector here, which I call vector, just the lth through nth samples from the original vector, which is the vector that was loaded with the numbers from the file, which in this case, the file is named flyaway.wave. Okay. So elf 
the elf or the, or the number that would be placed here then would be uh, 6,000 minus 80 and whatever that turns out to be you can calculate that on your own uh, is what will end up being placed in the elf value here and then what we're saying is we'll begin from that elf value up to the 6,000th value and we're just gonna uh, use that and put put those values into this term here vector all right starting on line number 26 what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to plot out this information in a figure and I'm going to plot out those 80 samples okay or from the elf to the nth sample I'm going to plot those out into a figure and I'll show you what that comes out to be equal to I'll go ahead and set a breakpoint here and I'll go ahead and start my program this is just uh, to run the program and you'll see what shows up okay so what shows up here now is a figure that shows 0 through 80 samples of the music that has been generated uh, from the or, or that has been extracted if you will from the file fly dash wave okay that's the 80 uh, 80 samples from it that was uh, just shown there let's go back to it okay and so those 80 samples are what being uh, what are being displayed here now this doesn't exactly look like a sine wave that we talked about at the beginning uh, or in part one of the series but what this is is this is a set of sine waves that have been combined together and when they add up together this is what they end up looking like okay and what we'll do sometime later in the series I'll actually prove to you that it's just a set of uh, frequencies or a set of uh, signals sine waves that have been added together okay so now that we've shown or talked about what exactly all of this means what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove this uh, percent sign here and what that does is it now makes this portion of the uh, of the program active or makes it possible for MATLAB to be able to see it okay and what this does is it tells MATLAB to play the sound that's in this vector at this sampling rate and it's to interpret that information as being this many bits okay it's to interpret it as being this many bits so actually let's let's before we actually do that let's step back for a minute I'm going to stop it uh, right at this point so I'm going to stop uh, use a breakpoint at that point let's go ahead and save that and I'm going to tell it to run and it'll stop at this point right here okay and let's go now to the editor and what you'll notice is that the editor printed out these values here these 80 values that were inside of vector now remember vector was a portion that was taken from y right and so these are the different samples here and these samples here are related to this set of sine waves that were uh, shown in this figure okay if you remember also I asked it to tell me what f of s was equal to and f of s remember is a sampling frequency and it says the sampling frequency is equal to 44 uh, 1100 or 44 K and the data within that file that fly away wave file actually we have 16 bits okay so it's a 16 bit uh, I guess you can say uh, coding all right okay so now given that that's uh, given that information all right what we're going to do is let's go back to the uh, editor window and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tell it to play the song that's in here and you'll be able to hear the song that's being played and in order to do that I'm going to tell it to go ahead and run and you'll hear the song okay
Okay. So that was our music that was uh, being played there. And uh, just one thing I'd like to point out before we uh, finish up this uh, part number two here. Uh, for the uh, file that was just being played, remember we pl print out the, the first uh, 80, or not, the, the first 80 samples we did, right? Um, what happens is over here, I just want to point these out because I didn't point these out before. Uh, on the X label, notice that I told it to print this uh, string in here, which is our time. And for my Y label, I told to print my amplitude in here. And for the title of the song, I told I wanted the title of the song to be the name of the wave file, okay, which is the flyaway.wave, okay. So if you look at this information in here, uh, up to this point here, right here, between 26 and 31, you'll get an impression as to what this portion of the file actually does, okay. All right, so that concludes uh, part number two of this series. OK, uh, what we're going to do is in part number three, we'll look at uh, flipping the music around uh, so that, you know, you can hear the music actually being played backwards. And we'll actually show that you can do that with MATLAB. And that's just by simply flipping the uh, vectors. All right. Uh, if you uh, would like to get more information about this uh, or any uh, thing within uh, engineering, physics related to for instance music or anything any topics within you can definitely check out my website and my website is www.clyletson.com or you can check out my youtube channel and the youtube channel is uh, listed here on the screen www.youtube.com backslash c a l e t t s o m e p h d p e all right uh, thank you for taking a look at this video